So the next person we want to introduce to you is also, it's, he's the class of, freshman class of 2013. It's his first time on stage at the Mastermind event. He's got an incredible story. Known him for a while. We've seen him go through the dream, struggle, victory. And I want to really give a warm welcome. And please help me give him a warm welcome, Mr. Jerry Scribner. <laughs> July 2007, the possibilities of the people you meet. I meet a gentleman named Tom Schreider, also known as Big Al. And he introduces me to a guy named Art Jonak. And about a year later, Art Jonak uh, invites me to Mastermind 8. Friday night, this night, in 2008, I'm a year and a half, 18 months into my first and only networking business. Guys, I'm sitting on the back row. I'm what Randy Gage calls a grinder. I'm struggling. I don't know if this thing will work. Go through the weekend, Saturday, which is like tomorrow night. I go to bed and I had the most vivid dream I think I've ever had in my life. Dream, Art Jonak introduced me on stage thousands of people. Sunday more. I was so scared and nervous. Sunday after it was all over, I was a ball of nerves, and I approached Art and I said, "I had this dream, and one day you will introduce me at Mastermind." So those of you in the back row, those of you that are brand new into networking. the possibilities of who you meet. Who will be that person five years from now that Art introduces on stage? I grew up in central Michigan, Midland, Michigan, actually. I was the son of a construction worker. And when I was about eight years old, I really got attached to baseball, football, and basketball. And if it had a ball attached to it, I was all in. And you see, I had a dream when I was a little kid that one day I was going to play professional sports. And I would probably win a World Series ring for my beloved Detroit Tigers or a championship ring for the Detroit Lions or the Detroit Pistons. And you see, by the time I got through high school, all the pitchers figured out I couldn't hit a curveball. And at five foot nine, and at that time 180 pounds, there was no way the University of Michigan was come calling my way to play football so that I could get to the NFL. But I knew that the Michigan State Spartans would call me to come play basketball. Well, there's an old saying white men can't jump. So I go off into the construction world and as a young man I set a goal that by the time I was 30 I would be a millionaire. It didn't happen. And at 31 I was dead broke and in major, major crisis in credit card debt. In the early 2000s I'm coaching my daughters in a basketball league and I meet a gentleman named Rick. He was one of the parents and I coached his daughter for three years. This was 2003, 2004. 
And in 2008, I'm sitting in a Panera Bread. And Rick says, what are you doing? And I said, come here, let me show you something. And I showed him my network marketing business. And Rick joined my business. And he joined that witness protection program. Never saw him again. Okay. In 2010, Rick calls me two and a half years after he joined our business, never put in one customer. And Rick said, I have a friend in Pennsylvania that may be interested in what you're doing. And I thought, wow, that's great because we're about to open up the state of Pennsylvania. So I flew to Philadelphia, never had been there before. I didn't realize that right across the river was New Jersey. And you could cross a bridge and you're in New Jersey. I, I didn't realize it was all like that. And I go up and at that uh, trip, which was actually November 2nd of 2010, and guys, I'm talking to you about the possibilities of the people you meet. I meet a guy named Tom. And Tom introduces me to a guy named Bob. Bob lived in New Jersey. Bob was 71 years old. He was a retired air conditioning contractor. He was a construction guy like me. And we kind of hit it off. And I showed Bob my business. And Bob said, wow, this looks great. I'd, I'd like to, I think I'll do this. And I said, fantastic. And we started building a team. Now, if Bob was standing here today, he would tell you this. He doesn't understand network marketing, he, he, but he's just the greatest guy in the world. He, he, at the time, he was 71. He's a skier. He's a golfer. He's just the friendliest guy. In fact, his first 30 days, I was working with, with Bob, and we sponsored four people. And three of them quit. And the one stuck around, and the one that stuck around hit the highest pin level in our company. And it made Bob some significant passive royalty type income. And it was funny, we'd go to events up in the Northeast, and Bob would be at the events, he was always there. And there'd be a group of people that had just joined his downline. And I'd bring them over to Bob, and I'd say, hey Bob, these Four new people just joined your group. Now, again, Bob will tell you this. He would go, he'd look at him, he goes, All right now, y'all get off your butts and get out there and go make me some money. <laughs> I had to kind of pull him to the side and say, Bob, this this is a volunteer army. It probably doesn't, you know, it's probably not the best way to motivate your team. But everybody loved Bob. He was just the guy that everybody wanted to be around, and he always has a smile on his face. I'm talking to you about the possibilities of who you're going to meet. We build this team with Bob. And about a year ago, Bob gets married at 74 years old. Okay? I'm telling you, he's got a unique guy. And in August... I'm up in the Northeast, and on a Friday night, driving home to meet his wife, his new wife, Bob has a stroke in his car. He drives across five or six front lawns and ends up in one of his neighbor's front yard. Thankfully, he didn't hit anything, but he had a massive, massive stroke. I got the word, and that Sunday, two days later, I'm in the hospital with Bob. Bob is totally paralyzed on his right side. He cannot speak. He looks at you, and there's nobody there. And it, it, it crushed me. And in the room, I'm there for a couple hours just sitting, praying with him. And in the room walks in his wife, Arlene, who I had never met before, and his son, Bob Jr. 
they didn't know me. They, they said, who are you? And I said, oh, I'm Jerry from Texas. And they hugged me and just said, oh, my goodness, Bob talks about you all the time. Bob, we love you. You're amazing. He, he never shuts up about you. And I go, well, I'm pretty fond of him too. And we sit and we talk about Bob. And his wife Arlene looks at me and she goes, you know Bob, or Jerry, she says, we've been married less than a year and, and I know he does this crazy business that you're involved with. And I've asked him before, are you making any money with that thing? And she says, he'd always do this. He'd take his fingers and he'd rub them together. And he'd go, yeah, I'm making a few pennies. Bob was making a whole lot more than a few pennies. That was August 15th of this year. Since August 15th, this network marketing company has sent his wife a direct deposit check every single month while Bob is fighting for his life in that hospital bed. And you see, sometimes we're afraid to talk to that next person that we meet. And my message to you tonight is the possibilities of the next person you meet. You see, it may not be that they're going to be Orrin Woodward or that they're going to be Sarah Robbins and make you all kinds of money. They might be Bob. And you don't know in their future that something happens that they need this income. Bob is now 74 years old. Honestly, I mean, I pray for this man every day. I, I pray he recovers, but he may not. But I thank God that Tom introduced me to Bob. And Bob introduced me to a few people. And that ripple effect took over. And now look at the impact that it's had for Bob and Arlene. And I want to submit to you this weekend the possibilities of who you meet because you have no idea the pain that they're going through in their life and how this crazy profession can help them. It may not get them a big car or a fancy house, but what if it helps them put their kids through college or pay off credit card debts? If it does that, it's an absolute total winner. So I want to ask... Those of you that are new here, like me, a year, 18 months into your business, who will be the next story? Who will be the next person that you meet? And you'll have a decision to make. Do I talk to them about my business or do I not? And when that thought comes in your mind, I want you to think of Bob. I love Bob. I love our profession. I love people. And I love the possibilities of what we can do for millions of people around the world that are hurting, that we can reach out and, and touch. Thank you all and God bless.